Hello and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditech, CTO of DVS, and today we're going to take a look at one of our brand new partnerships with a company called Sensovic. Sensovic is a French company that have innovated AI audio detection. So today we're going to take a look at one of their sound scanner modules. So integrated um, listening device, motherboard, PoE, uh, network connection, etc. The way this works is put it on the network and this can send like HTTP commands, um, alerts, etc. to say a Hypervision PTZ. They are Hypervision partners, so they are integrated into the Hypervision PTZ. So the idea of this product is this could be fitted, say, in a public space or an area where there could be uh, sound detection via the use of AI. They're fully embedded with AI. They have different products for different scenarios. So this could be for detection of gunshots, car crashes, um, power tools, so cutting through a building with power tools. If it's a bank, a uh, petrol station, a uh, forecourt that's closed out of hours, etc. Um, so the use of breaking in abnormal sounds, so shouting, so a customer service perspective. So a unit that's fitted a customer service till an aggressive tone is taken, therefore an alert is triggered, um, which can activate the recording or a, an alert to the manager that an aggressive uh, style conversation is taking place. A public space monitoring, the healthcare, um, colleges, universities, anywhere re where sound detection, events, public space again, I keep saying public space, but event detection, so again where you want to um, detect for abnormal sounds like we've already mentioned, the gunshots, explosions, car crashes, power tools, um, anything abnormal that you really want to uh, sort of be one alerted to but also turn a PTZ around. A PTZ is great but it's always generally looking at the wrong thing. This product will interact with the PTZ and therefore turn um, the PTZ in the direction of that event or where the sounds come from so then really alert your operators to what's going on in that scene so they can be very reactive very quickly. But again different products different scenarios so you've got the sound scanner, the Lasco, the Muti, the Soko, the Sparrow um, so you can click on it and it's different um, products for different scenarios. So each one of these will give a different scenario. Some of the products will allow you to give an IO output, so the sound is detected and an IO output is triggered, so you can alarm through a camera input, DVR, NVR input, or turn a pre-TZ um, to a position via the alarm input, so like the old um, uh, input output way. So this is the product we're gonna look at today and we'll talk about some of the other products. So stay tuned, I'm gonna transfer you across to the laptop and we'll do a little bit of testing. Okay, so I'm back at my PC now. So I do have the sound scanner here. So it's powered by PoE. You can see uh, the lights are flashing, stick it on the network. I've already addressed this through the simple web browser configuration, which we'll go through shortly. Each of the products does have a comprehensive user manual as well in English, so you can always refer to that. What you'll notice with the sound scanner is on the back, you'll see there's four microphone detection holes. The way this is supposed to work is it fits top down. So you mount that on a a CCTV column on a wall on a bracket looking down so that would be fitted above and the, the detection area is 360 downward so we've already got that onto the network so before we move on to the test inside of that these are the products the different variation of the products that we can actually offer now it depends on the scenario that you want for the detection audio type so we have the sound scanner this one which we're going to run through quickly in a minute and I can detect car crashes, uh, breaking in, gunshot, explosion, breaking a glass and vehicle crashing in, etc. So you can see that each spec sheet will run through the specific um, deployment uh, scenario for these products because it's not each one has a very slightly different way it works. So you choose the right product for the right scenario or application. So we've got the Lasco, which is cutting a power tool. So if you've got like a a bank, um, a petrol station, a 24-hour secure store, such a where, where they can cut through a wall, drill through a wall, high-value uh, items inside. These are like for specifically designed for like power tool use. So if somebody's trying to break into a building through a wall, etc., using the um, power tools as their uh, way of entry, then this is the perfect product for you. So the outdoor Lasco unit, Soco unit is another outdoor unit. So again, um, you've got the vehicle gunshot etc and again detonations glass breakage accidents sparrow so automatic gunshot and explosion detector so this would be used uh, indoor so you've got the gunfire different types of weapons and explosions and fire so you can use those and then you've got the phobos um this is for the verbal aggression automatic detection of cries of panic so again um 
abrupt rise of voice sounds in relation to uh, general ambience where duration and rhythm can ca be a character state of char characteristics of a state of panic. So something could have happened and the people are running around screaming and shouting in a panic state. And then you've got the mutey, which is the aggression. So verbal aggression. So really for like a customer service or till area indoor where you're going to get that potential customer service, probably very good case for this. Um, or a, a concierge area for a hotel, perhaps, um, where someone's coming in, shouting and screaming, an alarm can be sent to the security team. They can come in and assist or trigger a recording, etc. So it's a discreet way of alarming other people that there's a potential issue happening in that area. So different products for different scenarios. So very, very simple to choose which one is the one for you. Now, if we open up the web browser, so what we've done here is I've taken a standard PTZ so I'll just drive that to a home preset. So a standard PTZ, which is looking in our office. So all I've done is wait for the video to come back. Under configuration, very simple configuration. You can use the admin password. It does work, but it's better to create a standard user. So under user management for the PTZ, a high vision PTZ, I've created a dedicated operator, which we then use within the Sensivic product to drive the PTZ. So if I go back to live view, now, when you first get the Sensivic product, the IP address, you need to change it to match your network. So the IP address is 192.168.1.10. So you simply adjust that to fit in with the network scenario that you need to do. So when you first open up the web browser, you'll see under connections, you'll see the IP address settings there. Once you've set the IP address details, the subnet mask and the gateway, you need to restart the detector. And you can always check for the latest firmware by contacting DVS or Sensovic, and they will advise on whether your product needs a firmware update. You can also have the web page in French. If you can speak French, please select French. So we've got a little warning here. This unit is in test and demo mode because that's the most effective way to test it to make sure the detector is detecting sounds and then driving that preset. But it will give you a warning. That's not the deployment state. That is simply for test and demo profile. The actual application will determine which of the profiles you choose, which I'll go through in a minute. So once you set your IP address, restart the detector, simply go into notification. So we're going to drive a PTZ. There are some... Um, methods you can use so there are uh, UDP TCP notifications so you can select HTTP TCP and UDP notification type access Bosch Han Hanwha uh, Hike Vision Uniview Smart Device Visimax so these are ones that are directly integrated into the product and there are some VMSs which support this product directly again if you read the manual it will tell you more about the um, CGI commands the UDP HTTP TCP so you can go through the manual and work through that and then if you still need any help speak to us and we can involve Sensific if it's a little bit out of the normal scope but for purpose of demonstration it's a height vision PTZ notification after inhibition delay no and then the identifier just leave it as default but you can change that the IP address is, that's the IP address of the PTZ we're driving and the listening port, the web port's 80. So if you've changed the web port from 80, then change that. Preset offset. Now this adds in 10 to the preset offset. So if you've got presets 1 to 10 already, don't forget this particular sensor is a 360 and it's broken up into 12 zones. So you get 12 zones, uh, about 30 degrees, is that right? Something like that, about 30 degrees. Um, each zone is about 30 degrees. So when a sound comes in, it can actually identify what zone that has come in from and then drive it to the relevant presets. You get up to 12 presets you can drive. So the way you put it is IP address of the PTZ, listen import, preset offset. So we start our presets. We've got zones 1 to 12 there, or 0 to 12, um, and we add 12 to it. So zone 0, we add 12 to that would be zone 1 um, or preset. So we add 12 to 0 to 12. So preset 12 is the first one. And then all the way up to 12, there'd be 24. So add 12 to 12 is 24. I can do my maths. So it's a way of not interfering with existing presets up and offsetting them in case there is a conflict with existing presets. So preset on preset offset, we start at 12 and then it'll add 12 to that. Now you can select a zone. So if I wanted to select preset one, go to live view just to make sure it's there. Send test notification. Now that will drive the preset to the notification area that I wanted for this preset. So we'll do that, send it to the PTZ to analyze and then send it. 
it is a test so there we go so now the ptz has moved to that notification area and again because you've got 12 areas each one could be a different preset it's a very simple thing to do and again for purposes of demonstration all i've done is use the same preset so if i use like preset 10 for instance and send test notification it will drive it to the same preset because it's much easier for me as a test my demo room is sort of by just on the inside of this fire exit down here so the purpose of demonstration when this sound activator is activated it will drive it to the demonstration area okay so once you've set up your product and again with the vmss there are some well-known vmss that accept this product directly again speak to your dvs specialist if you want to know any more information so we filled out the listening information and we've completed a test now that works it's nice and easy and the monitoring this gives you some uh, details about the product itself. So the learning detection and notification are all enabled and you get the calibration details, uh, sound characteristics, what profile, and then time from last restart, event counts, time from last event, it's 13 minutes ago. So you get some basic information of uh, and the last notified event. So it's a detail around the product, its use, etc. So it's probably really good for if we need to interact with it or get some information for R&D to see how the product's working. And you can obviously print that page or screenshot it and send it to us uh, for analysis. Settings, this is where you select the application uh, profile for this sound scanner. So profile is test and demos, but you've got high vigilance, medium vigilance, and low vigilance. So depending on the applications, you've got high vigilance is like um, the utmost priorities, the utmost uh, vigilance, if it says what it says. So um, the top priority, then you've got medium and low. In the actual manual, it tells you where those applications are best. So public areas, uh, a quiet residential area, uh, a, a, a combination of the both. Angular reference, if you want to change the way that's mounted, the way the angular reference to detection zones, you can offset it. And then the signal markers, you can reset. To, so notified events counters, is, you can reset to zero. So it keeps it up to date. Now, that's the product itself is very, very simple to interact with through the IP web browser. All we need to do now is this particular model, you can see it's in test and demo mode, and there are some uh, LED indicators to, to not notify you what that product is doing. In the manual, that'll tell you what they mean. This product can only do the notification to the PTZ, HTTP, UDP, or TCP. Some of the other products we sell have got the IO uh, hard output, so it's very easy or much easier to interact with a product if you just want an IO interaction, drive a preset that way. So again, speak to us on that. I'm going to get the latest firmware and update it, and then we're going to do some testing. So stay tuned, and we'll be back for some testing. Back on the unit itself now. As I said, it's in uh, warning, and the, the, the red box is warning you. It's in test and demo profile, which means it's fine for deploying if you want to test it to make sure the unit is operational and the notifications work. But please don't deploy this in this operation mode. It, what you will see is any menu we go into from now, the big red box warning will be there to tell you don't deploy it in that. So fine for testing and demo, but when it's deployed, you obviously choose the application scenario, which we talked about earlier. What you will notice with this unit is the lights are flashing there, so it's operational, so the power and the alarm light will come on when it detects noise. But when you do power this unit up, the first three minutes of its life uh, cycle is the uh, calibration process so you won't get any notifications during the three minute power period so if the unit goes offline comes back online power cut or you restart it whatever just bear in mind that three minute window so unit is set up and ready to go we've shown you how the notifications work and again just to show you they still work if i go to bring up the ptz and let's just bring that back because we've already done some testing this morning so again on its home preset under zone and you can see there that's sent if i go there that's zoomed into the area where our demonstration room is on the other side so put it back to his home preset we're going to use a clapper so this clapper unit will generate um sound uh, a sound wave which will travel into the microphone array on the back of the unit and then hopefully drive the PTZ. So I'm gonna go and stand in the corner of the room and lightly tap this a few times and the PTZ should move. So you should hear me do the clapper and you should see the PTZ move accordingly.
There we go. I think you would have heard the clapper sound and then obviously you saw the PTZ move, so we'll do that another time. Uh, put it back to his home preset. There we go, so everybody's starting to arrive for work now. So let me just go and do a clap, you guys. And there we go. So two little simple demonstrations to prove the unit is working. Now I know the unit works. And then we could have, obviously, like I said, 12 presets. And with the use of our little clapper, thanks to Sensific or Bruno specifically for getting this and sending this to me, because great for testing. So very simply now, what we would do to the unit itself is go into the unit, go to monitoring. Oh, go to settings, sorry. Um, and then from there, we'd select our deployment. So high vigilance, medium vigilance, or low vigilance. And then we can actually help you set those or tell you what they mean should you need it. That's all I wanted to show you on this unit. It's a very, very powerful system. If you need any more information, please contact our DVS or your DVS uh, sales specialist who can provide more information. And hopefully we look forward to working with you in the near future with this kind of system. It really does have lots and lots of application uses. Don't forget, if you want to be part of the Real Installer Club, don't forget to uh, tag us in all of your installations using the hashtag Real Installers um, tagline. Other than that, have a great week. I hope you're safe, and we'll see you next week for another how-to video. Thank you.